Hello viewers, we understand that a lot of people are passing through hardships in life. So many untold hardship have met with so many people and they are asking, how are we going to come out of this? The seven causes of business failure in the life of men and women. And by the time you listen to this, we believe that by God's grace, you will receive wisdom how to overcome them and then achieve success, the desired success of your life. But before we shall go into this, wherever you are, I would like us to pray. Shall we pray now, please? Bow down your hearts and begin to talk to God. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to bless you. We want to thank you for this opportunity to break the bonds and the bondage and the shackles of the enemy in the life of your people. Poverty, they say, is a cause. Obviously, it is. My God, we are asking you that you will liberate your people through this program. Give them liberty from poverty. That anyone that listens to this program abides by the teaching obeys the teaching and practices it shall receive wonderful success from you for promotion comes from you only we're asking for your prosperity upon your people in jesus mighty name we pray now welcome back what you're about to hear is a vision it's not just a teaching and we believe strongly that god who has given this vision will make it work in your life now listen to me viewer as you watch this video now i want you to believe that it is god speaking to you through this speaker not just you watching the speaker speaking god is speaking right into your heart also this is a pure message from god you can believe with me that a lot of people are suffering and not just that they are blaming god for their sufferings i believe god have decided through this message to liberate as many as we hear this message and obey it i motivate you in the name of jesus start wherever you found out you felt as you listen to this message there are seven points that god has given to me which are the seven causes of business failures in the life of men and women and as we go through them please i want you to carefully correct yourself wherever you have failed and if you can do so in the name of the lord jesus i can assure you that success endless success shall be your portion let us go to the seven points the first point that we want to treat is laziness proverbs chapter 6 i want to start to read from verse 6 go to the ant thou sluggard consider her ways and be wise which having no guide overseer or ruler provided her meal in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest how long will thou sleep O sluggard that was sluggard there stands for a lazy man when will thou arise out of thy sleep yet a little sleep a little slumber and a little folding of hands or to sleep so shall thy poverty come as armed bandit that traveleth and you are want as an armed robber that's the word of god now listen viewer i would like you to answer these few questions when do you wake up every morning think about it some people as late as 9 a.m are still waking up from sleep you can believe me that at this time a lot of people have completed their first assignment in their respective offices but somebody is still waking up tomorrow such will begin to blame god for his failure or her failure in business number two question i would like you to consider is how do you go about your morning duties when you wake up in the morning how do you go about them maybe early in the morning you go greeting neighbors telling one or two fine sweet stories before you go to take your bath before you sweep your houses before you begin to iron or maybe put on your dresses for work and by the time you finish all this just look at the time i'll tell you that we must have clocked eight or nine a.m it's not a good time to leave house for work any day 
remember that any day you start well you will end well any day you start so poorly you will end poorly so when you wake up and how you take care of your morning chores goes a long way to determine the success you will achieve in a day do you procrastinate the word procrastination is putting forward what you should have done now is that the pattern of life you live maybe there are circumstances but believe me no circumstance is beyond approach that's why the bible says in the book of philippians i can do all things through christ who strengthens me no matter the circumstance as a businessman if you have an agreement with your customers or your clients you must do everything possible to make sure you keep that agreement and on time if you keep procrastinating issues what it means is that with time on your desk with time in your business transactions with time at your workplace there will be loads of work for you to do that you will find out that at the end of the month at the end of the year there shall be so many carryovers these are what we call failure in business when there are so many carryovers you will find out that there are so many profits you would have scored that will be unscored because with time events and occasions will overtake whatever you have carried over there will be of no relevance you have failed in that area do you go into research that's number four thing i want to ask you right now as we are dealing with laziness do you go into researches for improvement in your services or are you the lazy type who settle for the status quo that's the way it is done no matter how it is done no matter how good the way it is done now is there is always room for improvement why don't you put yourself in the position of being the person that will bring the improvement if you can do this i can tell you that failure is far from your doorstep if you can be the first person to always bring incentive to your business i will tell you that you will be among them that will always be on top so starting from now begin to do researches on how to improve your services your work or your business even if you are trading on Texas, let me tell you there are better Texas that nobody has tried that can be imported or that can be uh, fabricated in your country do researches and then go for this sample them you will be shocked at the success you will score don't settle for the status quo the number 15 i want to say on laziness is this is the question are you the type that enjoy, enjoy partying so much you enjoy pleasure so much you have so much time for parties so much time for occasions and you have less time for your business if you are such a person let me tell you with time these pleasures will amount to pressure in your life and when there is pressure it is called stress and when there is stress you will break down when a man breaks down what happens to his business it gets broken down a broken down business is a failed business this is one of the reasons why people fail in their businesses so please give less time to partying give more time to work the bible says it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting because the wise will put this to heart if you are a wise person and you want your business to succeed take so much time for your business and less time for enjoyment the sixth thing I want to tell you is this. Don't be a storyteller. There are men in their business areas. When they get worried is when their partner in storytelling did not come to work. As soon as they arrive, the question they will ask is, is so so and so on desk? As soon as they discover such is not on desk, their day is not made. Their day is shattered. Why? Because such a person is their storyteller mates. If you're a storyteller, let me tell you, your business has no future. Let me tell you this story. There was a customer who arrived at the market where he used to buy the things he sells. Now, when he arrived, he came very early and there was a new design, a new stuff, a new product of what they sell. Instead of him to go immediately and begin to negotiate, he began to felicitate, greeting people, going to the big boys that are in that line you know they are guys greeting them so that they will feel like ah he's one of his big he's all that you know he was greeting when another customer from his own location came to the same market and saw the same new design that customer simply greeted the man who had the new design 
and discussed business with him immediately knowing the price how it will be supplied immediately he ordered for all the new design that was available and paid cash by the time the first person that arrived finished greeting and telling stories and came he realized now yes Oga, i need this new design uh, how much is it the Oga told him it has been paid for to his greatest amazement it was his own counterpart it was his own person from his own location who came after him do you know brothers and sisters he was amazed that this new design has been closed i mean everything bought by a person who came from his own location he was there before the man arrived he was greeting people when the man went to negotiate by the time he came to buy everything has been sold that is why it's not good to be a storyteller as somebody who wants to score success in business let's go to the second point dishonesty we have treated laziness let us treat dishonesty now insincerity let us go in the book of proverbs chapter 20 let us look at verse 17 first the bible says there bread of deceit is sweet to a man but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel let's go to verse 23 of the same chapter 20 and the bible says there too diverse weights are an abomination unto the lord and the false balance is not good diverse weights are an abomination unto the lord and the false balance is not good now this part of the scripture is talking about dishonesty diverse weight means when somebody has different measures to value treasure or to value quality when somebody has different ways or different terms to discuss business let me give you an example in our society today there are people when you come to their shops for instance they will begin to hike the prices of the things they sell maybe they look at you you are well dressed and they feel maybe you don't know anything about this the price they will tell you it will be so exorbitant so out of the circumference or out of the surrounding of the original price and by the time you begin to price they will begin to swear in the name of the lord that they bought it at so so and so price that they bought it and they, all these things are lies if they will end up in convincing you what they will do is they will go now and begin to brag that they have cheated you that is what the bible is talking about here as diverse weights and it says is an abomination unto the lord anybody that transacts his or her business this way that person already has created room for his failure there cannot be any success in such business because that person one day must actually find out that you have cheated him or her and uh, by the time they find out you will think you have lost only that customer but let me tell you through that customer you would have had so many other customers that may have given you better businesses if you lose that customer you have lost 10 customers do you tell your customers the truth a lie must always be discovered if you don't know you lose your customer one customer let me tell you the proportion or the the statistics is to every customer you have 10 customers are underway so if you lose one 10 are lost those 10 that are lost would have brought their own tens, which would have made them 100 customers and these are the little secrets of success make sure you tell your customers the truth so that you can return them the price if it is high tell them tell them the difference in the quality they may go and buy the cheaper ones by the time they get home and try them and they don't serve them maybe when they come back they will buy the one that is superior the one you are selling when they get home the services they will receive from those quality services i mean products will make them now to bring their friends and relatives and in so doing you are increasing your capacity so please tell your customers the truth the second thing you know about dishonesty is this lies break confidence and trust it will make your customers to be very careful concerning you what still it will drive them away anytime your customers discover that you are not telling them the truth every trust every confidence they have built upon you is broken and shattered it will throw them away so try as much as you can to be honest to your customers remember that the bible says a bread of deceit may be sweet to the man that has deceived 
the person they got the bread from. But at the end, his mouth must be filled with gravel. Why should you continue to tell lies in your business? If you must continue, then you have signed for failure in your business. The third thing I want you to know about this is this. Lies will break the trust of not only the people that buys from you, but also the people that sell to you. Let me tell you a story. There was once I used to be in business. We traveled to about to buy textile materials. And there's a friend of ours. I won't call his name here. When we get there, what he does is he manipulates the yardages. Let me explain. These fabrics are in rows. By the time we begin to select the designs, he will keep his own design at one portion. I will keep mine. Other customers, other of my colleagues, they will keep theirs. This man will go now and begin to watch. When the white men are not looking, he will use big to change the yard edges. If the yard edge is like 74 years, he will change the 7 to 4. It will become now 44 years. If the yard edges are like 17 years, he will now change the yard edges to something like uh, 14 years. In so doing, he was stealing from them. But one day they discovered it. And from that day, they nearly locked him up. But by the time the, the chairman of the place came, he said they should leave him. But he was given a command never to come into that place again. So what he does now is, all of us, we came from the same place. But he will give us money to buy from him. And we will tell him openly that we will add 10, 10 naira on every yard we buy for him. He had no choice. Because of his dishonesty, already where we buy, he had begun to lose 10 naira. Can you see what lies can do to anybody? So please be honest in your business and don't tell your customers, don't tell your suppliers, don't tell anybody that is involved with you in business lies. Lies also will hamper your future in any field you find yourself. It gives short-lived success. That's exactly what the Bible is saying when it says that a bread of this it will be sweet to he that has gotten it. But at the end, his mouth will be filled with gravel. So, if you want to succeed in your business, make sure you do your business with honesty. Make sure you tell your customers the truth. Make sure you tell your suppliers the truth. This is one key to success in business. But if otherwise is the case, then it is key to failure in business. The third thing we want to look at now is wrong attitude. That's the third point for business failure for so many men and women now let's look at the bible from the book of daniel chapter 6 verse 3 and this daniel was preferred above all the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him if you look for that he says so the king placed them above the whole realm what are we talking about now wrong attitude excellent spirit is what will take away wrong attitude from your life wrong attitude when you have a negative attitude what it means is you have built for yourself failure bridge negative attitude is a link to failure negative attitude can never bring you towards people that will make you what you ought to be in life wrong attitude in no way can make you to excel because wrong attitude negates excellent spirit and there cannot be any success in any field of life without one being excellent minded you must have excellent spirit to excel in your business so wrong attitude negates excellent spirit it negates excellence in any field of life wrong attitude makes you repulsive to people it won't bring you close to people at all you won't have friends you won't have partners you will be alone a tree can never make a forest the second thing you have to know about wrong attitude is this it will chase away helpers it will chase away people that are supposed to help you people who may see your gift people who may see your ability and who are moved to help you when they come close to you you will chase them away with your wrong attitude let me tell you this story there was a young man this young man was so gifted he was a great singer he sings very well he was an artist a music artist he sings in his church one day as he was singing in the church a widow a member of his church picked interest on him 
this widow later went to the pastor and inquired after the young man the pastor told him that as a matter of fact uh, the young man is highly gifted if she can help him record his albums because that was what the young man was telling the pastor that he wanted to record his albums the widow said that she was able to do that that she would so much like to do that she was so blessed on sunday when he was ministering in song so the pastor gave the widow the address of the young man where he paints and designs things he's an artist as well he paints that is what he does for a living so on monday this widow now took her time and went that place to see the artist i mean the gifted young man when she got there she met him she was happy she greeted him the young man did not know the widow because you know the widow is member of the church in the congregation the young man has never kind of recognized her so when she sat down there the woman he told the woman to wait that he was busy working the woman was waiting for him for minutes an hour two hours at a time the widow became impatient and she wanted to speak to him to let him know why she was there the young man was so haughty in his attitude he shouted on the widow say can't you see i am busy can't you just patiently wait i'm coming the widow was so hot and in so discovering she found out that this young man though he was so gifted but he had a bad attitude a wrong attitude she gently got up from her seat and left his office this is how the young man missed that opportunity later when he got to the church the pastor began to ask him how the uh, how the meeting with the young, uh, old woman was the young man was like which old woman the pastor now narrated and described the woman to the man he shouted i didn't know she came to help me when the pastor narrated the widow to the boy the boy now recognized the woman he shouted on in his office ah then his eyes was open to see that another opportunity has come and left his life wrong attitude can make you lose opportunities it will make you to be misinterpreted if you have wrong attitude let me tell you my brother let me tell you my sister you are neighbors you are customers your family members they will always misinterpret your motive because the way you talk the way you behave will always make them think that you are haughty wrong attitude good morning is so different from good attitude good morning so please inculcate good attitude in your life and the first thing i want you to know about wrong attitude is this if you have problem with people you will always be found guilty because of wrong attitude i know of so many people maybe they have some scores to settle with people when there is a mediator they will not even allow the mediator to talk they will not even allow i mean their opponent to talk they will display their wrong attitude you know wrong attitude makes you impatient wrong attitude makes you haughty wrong attitude makes you to kind of neglect people wrong attitude makes you to insult people with all this i can tell you that your business cannot go forward when you insult one customer insult two customers insult three all your neighbors now will know that this is your attitude and i don't think that any of your neighbor will allow his customer or her customer or his person to come to patronize you and the people you have insulted they will all go out and tell others of their experience with you so wrong attitude is a very strong factor that makes for business failure make sure you work on your life and inculcate the right attitude of being honest the right attitude of being cheerful the right attitude of being cautious speaking to people politely it is very worthy of a businessman who wants to succeed to inculcate such attitude the fourth point that brings for or that makes for business failure is not being prepared not being trained not acquiring skill if you have no skill in life how will you succeed let me ask you what are you trained as are you trained as a tailor are you trained as a music engineer are you trained as a studio engineer are you trained as a movie maker are you trained as a pastor pastors are trained are you trained as a medical doctor are you trained as an artisan a carpenter all the rest are you trained as a businessman are you trained as a trader i want to correct an impression people think that trading is all about 
knowing where to buy and having a shop to sell even when you know where to buy you have a shop to sell and most of the qualities most of the factors that make for failure are in your life you will be in that shop and rotten in that shop hear me even when you know where to buy and you have a place to sell and you are not trained as a trader you will not know which one is your game and which one is your capital as soon as money enter your hands you will remember all the expenses before you before you know it not only your capital this time but maybe your suppliers who have given you credit facility you will spend their money too that is the problem with so many business people and this is why so many businesses have failed please make sure you are trained as a professional in any field you find yourself so that you can succeed number two thing success is the result of service or work you have done and money is the reward for the service or work you have done if you are not prepared in other words if you are not trained for any service or for any work then tell me which work will you do which service will you render what it simply means is you are not prepared for money or for success so if you are not trained then you are prepared for failure you definitely will fail it is one factor that brings failure in business not being prepared money is not what you need but ideas you cannot have a positive or a constructive idea outside a field of specialization what we are trying to say here is this if you are not trained if you are not a professional if you are not made to be able to render a service skillfully and professionally what it means that money or success will never greet you negative idea cannot bring a lasting success let me tell you this story there was a young man you know all these yahoo boys i think you know what i'm talking about so he has been hacking and uh, you know doing all, all these their things i don't even know their terminologies and then one time and this one time was just few months ago this young man hit 15 million naira and the whole neighborhood knew of this because he could not contain himself he could not contain the money he could not contain the success everybody knew that he hit it i had it through some young people in the vicinity where i lived he hit 15 million it was so much money may i ask you you that is listening to me now if you are giving 15 million do you think you cannot do well in your business thank you but reverse is the case this young man went and bought this old model camry you know the one they call horrible and he was flashing around the street around the neighborhood with this car today as i am delivering this teaching now this message this young man has nothing again to show for that 15 million naira success as a matter of fact he hardly fuels that car i've seen him severally now trekking because the money has finished why he was not trained as anybody so money is not your problem even if you are giving 100 million but if you are not trained as a professional in any field of life that hundred million will fizzle out like snow it will fizzle out like the morning dew all you need is skill get trained if you are a trader whatever you are selling is it textile materials is it a uh, uh, fashion materials is it food stuff please go and get training whatever you are selling there are secrets of that business you can only get that secret when you go to do what we call apprenticeship with somebody sometimes they will demand money that you pay them to train you to inculcate the wisdom to you get that money and pay them it is very important if you don't do this i am telling you that it is inevitable your business will fail so make sure you get prepared what we mean is make sure you get trained number fifth factor that makes for failure i want to handle now is lack of vision that is number five point lack of vision the bible says in the book of proverbs where there is no vision the people perish without a vision you are doing your business in darkness 
you follow the trend what others are doing you can never be original you can never be unique and ladies and gentlemen let me warn you you can never be better than the originator whoever originates everything is the best in that thing so go and get a vision from god vision only comes from god vision comes from nowhere but from god what this means is this before you start your business make out time with god and know exactly what god wants you to do without vision i am telling you you will perish what it means is that business will fail without vision your success will be limited every plague that comes will also touch you if you are doing your business without vision if god is not the person that revealed that business to you any problem that comes to that field of endeavor must touch you see when you are doing your business with god's leading any problem that comes god will shelter you take a record of jacob and his uh, father-in-law even all the life of jacob by the time he took his children to egypt that is when joseph brought them there take a record of what happened god was there all the way god gave joseph a vision when joseph got to egypt through that vision now he brought his people to egypt when there was problem in egypt god protected them in a place called goshen who has given you your vision if god is the originator of your vision god will see to it that that vision will succeed number thirteen i want you to know about vision is this you will do business only to satisfy your daily needs you cannot do business to be very successful if that business is outside the vision given by god hear me the Hebrew man will say Abakamumbobegoni Obasinachi it is from God hear me my brother hear me my sister go down and ask God what do you want me to do let me say another thing here your vision is your purpose it is God that will make that purpose to be very large all you need to do is just obey God by doing what he wants you to do in life the fourth thing and the last thing I want to say about vision is this without vision in your business you won't have a future and so will fail eventually perish that's what the bible says let me tell you a story there is a great man in this land as a matter of fact one of the greatest transporters we have in Igbo land gu okk i was privileged to be very close to him and one day he was telling us the story of his life do you know how he started immediately after the war he took his father's 404 to come to see how anisha was when he got to Fege, he found out that some people wanted to go to Enugu. He offered them help. To his shock, they offered him money. He took them to Enugu, collected money from them. He was so amazed. The money was enough to buy fuel, and he had much more remaining. And to his shock again, there were people who wanted to come from Enugu to Onisha. He took them again. They gave him money without his asking. That is how he started. Gradually, when he eventually entered business, he was dealing with towels and textiles. Something prompted him and he bought his first Mercedes truck because he was having problem in loading his goods in Lagos. Sometimes the transporters were using it to maneuver his goods. They will push others down before his own will come. It will be a little late. He was grieved. One day he bought cold muzzle and went and buy his own. After buying that one, it was God's miracle. He was able to acquire luxury buses from luxury buses the man i'm talking to you today has so many huma buses so many uh, these jet buses let me tell you what kind of transportation is saji you okay cannot into now i am telling you that he may be the first transporter in anambra state that may begin to fly airlines why he is working with vision that day he came to anisha god opened his eyes to show him son i want you to begin to help people transport them and protect them the good thing about him is he is always making what i will call research about transportation today GUOKK is one of the digitalized transport system in the whole of nigeria anywhere his buses are they can be in the office and monitor all the buses this is what we call vision more grace to you sir and i'm telling you viewer so can be your case if you will go by vision god will reveal to you it will start small but it will eventually be so big because every vision from god must start small that's why i said that money is not your business start your vision in a small way start your vision by faith start your vision with patience with time 
your vision must surely speak it will not lie in jesus name the sixth thing i want to address now that causes people to fail in business is impatience i want us to look at the book of psalm 102 verse 13 thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yes the set time is come this scripture now is telling you that in everything you are doing there is a time to favor you that's why the bible said in the book of proverbs chapter 3 there is time and season for everything yes in this earth there is time and season for everything and you must recognize this if you don't know this then you will be very impatient with god there is time for everything there is time you have for your success you have a time for your heat everybody has a heat time in life will you be there or will you shift before the heat comes it's in your hand every business has a season do you know the season of your business or service let me give you an example people that deal with textbooks people that deal with school uniforms the sellers all of them they know that every beginning of time especially the first time is their business season they wait for it the next question is this how prepared will you be to embrace your season how prepared will you be to maximize your season if you are the people in school uniform business and your season comes and you don't have enough stock of school uniform what do you think will happen the season will come and leave you and you continue to complain when you know the time of your season you will prepare yourself ahead of your season so that when the season comes then you will have a good harvest farmers know that harvest time is their season yes they know that very well and they will prepare for their season so make sure you are prepared for your season because you definitely will make your heat in your season it will take time for your service or your users i mean your service users or your clients to locate you it will also take time for them to know you and to trust you yes but the question is will you be patient for this process to take place the fourth thing i want to deal with here about time is favor is from god don't leave your location before your favor arrives be patient there's a story about a man who was dealing with uh, ceiling fans you know electricals and uh, this man he sells superior electrical materials and people because of his price they don't always buy from him but one day a customer came and buy from him because he convinced him it was a superior one that customer left and he was there others were selling more than him but something told him keep on with the quality one keep on with the original one after about two years my brother this man could no longer wait he decided to shift to another business so he relocated and left that shop another person entered that shop and continued to sell the same superior electric fans the same superior electric appliances when this happened the man that left did not know that his time and season had come but he has gone but in the government quarters the federal government took a decision through the ministry of education that superior fans should be mounted in every government boys secondary and uh, girls schools nationwide you can imagine the quantity of superior electric fans that will be purchased what i'm talking to you about now runs in millions of naira and then this contract came to this man that bought that farm from the man the man did not know that he was a government contractor when this paper was given to him approved signed the money released he rushed back to where that his customer was only to discover that the man was not there but he asked one question to the man that was there can you supply superior so so and so make of fans to me the man agreed and of course he did that in a twinkling of an eye a man that just moved in about two months ago became a millionaire this was this man's that left this man that left that shop it was his opportunity it was his heat it was his time it was his season but he was impatient he left before the opportunity arrived he left before the season came will you be patient in your business if you can be patient i can tell you you have a time 
and when your time comes when your season comes nobody can stop you you must make it but if you are impatient believe me you will continue to tell stories because you will continue to be a failure in business finally in this message i want to give you the most dynamic important factor that makes people to fail in business and that factor is this power source a lot of people are doing business without power source a lot of people are in business god is not their source satan is not their source i am not promoting satan but I want to tell you something. Nothing can move without force applied. Nothing can happen without reaction. It is God that brings the power to make success. It is God that gives the power to get wealth. It is God that brings promotion. Because the Bible says, promotion comes not from the east, not from the west, not from the south, not from the north. But God is the judge of who is promoted. If God is not the power source of your business, get ready to fail satan can power you you will succeed on earth but you will go to hell it is a choice choose who is your power source let me give you another instance in nigeria now you can choose to power whatever you are doing with nepa or you can choose to buy a generator to power it but let me give you the similitude nepa is like god because god gives freely you know, you pay almost nothing to use Nepal light, and it's very convenient. You don't have to go and uh, draw those hands and all that. You don't have to wake up in the night to make sure that it is not burning. Nepal just gives you light. That is the national supply. It is like God giving you sunlight. But if you choose to use plants, that is like Satan giving you a power to make wealth. That is like Satan powering your business. It can collapse anytime. Don't you know that we've had stories of generator sets, setting families ablaze, setting families on fire, setting houses on fire. We've had stories of generator uh, sets using their smoke to kill a whole family. I mean, it gives you light, that's all right, but the danger is enormous. Satan can give you money, but the danger is enormous. Please choose God. That is the right power source. It is God that will power you. And then you go to your pastor. Your pastor will tell you your obligation to God. I mean, things like tithing, things like giving to the work of God. When you know these things and you do them. My brother, let me see you not succeed. Failure is not your portion. God did not intend that you will fail in that business. God did not intend that your business will fail. But the things you didn't know, the things you were not doing, they were the cause of the failure. And I have told you most of those things. Begin now to correct yourself and begin to do the right thing. I can bet you in the name of the Lord God who has brought this message. Your business will begin to succeed now. Somebody say hallelujah. I want to thank you viewer because you have given time to listen to this wonderful message. And like I told you when I began, it is from God. And I am telling you the truth. It's a pure message from God. Just obey it. Just try the things you have had now. Success is yours. Thank you. Nike <laughs> Obi we to sia mo ton we se na ma na ta ge go nge ji we ri eni aka ne ku na oku bo afado kana aka na ko mo obe ni mre ina kokwa mu na ega diro mo o ma like oku di hia na ega de de cha cha shishe ji di mta ta ji gwa gezi oku thank you bo so ina ku na no nwe he ge ga so ku ji di mo na re ji we ri eni ji di me na ma gwa ge no nwe he go mje ba to obu na nji na ebe nyenu ezi oku ji no me eh eh bia aboki come aboki come na ko nya ba mu ba na bo ma dizi kan ka go dai come aboki uh -huh. Take soft rubber, make you no cut my leg. I don't want to see blood though. Kai Oga, I'm not going to cut him for your leg. I'm not going to see blood. Soft make you no wound me. Oh, I'm going to have a woman who has got money. I'm going to get a new house. I'm going to wear bag him. But it's a wicked though. It's a wicked. So it's only from ego can wear it. I'm going to get a bag him. But one, I'm going to get a bag him. But one, I'm going to get a bag him. Why did you cut your leg? It's from ego. I'm not going to get it. It's your own. Oga, I don't finish. Uh huh. You don't finish. Oh yeah, take me, give me change. Take. Take him, Oga. 
Why they give me 20 naira? How much you want to collect? How much be your money? We got my money na 30 naira. Take him for 20 naira. My money na 30 naira. Which kind of 30 naira? Come on, give me my change. Okay, okay. Come on, okay, bring okay, my change. Okay, 30 naira, I go collect. Okay. Bring that 30 naira, I go collect. Okay. Which kind of 30 naira? Who they begin to cut 30 naira? Give me change, I go collect. Okay. 30 naira, I go collect. Come, you the crazy. Give me, come on, give me change, Joyce. Wait. I'm okay, waiting for that. Wait, waiting for like that. Chine, keme. Come on, come on. What in be this? Ilesianya, or to Tizun or no Bosseta, or to Tomoy, Canabaniro, Hapu di Hanolo, or to Tundi Budi, Cahapuni Hanolo, Manabaniro. Here you are, toa with the Obara, the Zuno di Chino Bosseta, Yamere Gibu Woke, Lesianya, Gibu Wine, Lesianya, Cobayara, Yarebatanizonoge, Yamere Gibu Wine, Legida di Ganya, Gibu Woke, Legida Wunyagana, Can you know Yaripuilo, in who knows on Ilo? nke puri batalonu nsogbo na ezinu ulo ewe kwere otu nwoke nke nuru nwanyi ya na nwunyi na ebi na udo me ezinu ya na iledum mana nwoka biara nwe oyi na ilo onye aho metro oyi bu nwanyi ajadu nwanyi ajadu a ya na yawe na adi na mma mana enwo bosi obiara ka oho nwanyi ajadu a owe ehu nwoke ozo na be nwanyi Owe malite inwe ngute yana nwoke aho malite le isoku malite nuogo mana mbana nuogo a nwanyi ajadu a we woro odu we pia nwoke anisi nwoke we da we gbajie okpo azu ya dika eburu nwoke we je nu nuogo nu nuogo aho ko no mesia we buru onye kuru ngulo ko mesi su nuogo nata opo ikwa imi ho obula nke nwoke na eme nulo eji mara nwoke ozo oburu enye kuru ngworo nwoke ana aga nzi ahia opo ye ikunzo ogwu no ma obu gwa akwo umu azi odigi ho obuno na eme nzi na ezinu no ya ihe di otu a na ebute ogba ara na nsogbu na alumdi na nwunye ya mere ni ikpa azu anyi na eku na ndi ne na nna eku esige ine enye nwa ha nwoke mo nwa ha nwanyi ndi nugorodi ndu modu nzuzo we megide diha mobu nwunye ha they came out as husbands and wives of today are still doing the same thing and such is bringing crisis in your house so man watch your eyes woman watch your eyes husband look unto your wife wife look unto your husband but marriage begins when a man seeks the face of God for God to give him wife of his own that is marriage but today in our society mothers and fathers brothers and sisters even our friends find husbands and wife for us thereby deviating from the original plan of God in the Bible and also we have what we call night marriages many people marries in the night for anything that is done in the night can never be pleasing to the eyes when the day break also night marriage is like when a man went out on the street and picked a woman and went in with her after staying with her he discovered that this woman has a baby in her womb simply because this man may be an innocent human being he don't want to commit double sins at a time he don't want to kill that innocent baby in that womb he just out of sympathy picked in his mind to marry this lady at times you see that such marriages has problems Hello? Chief Akajaku? Aha, oh, Muneku. Nanya, Nanya Genti. A wound, even a mebby, even a mebby. Eh, on a beggy. Munyagi? Ha! Umukirikum was the gone, do up your name, if you are never, if you are a hotel teacher, go and do my curriculum was Muka by it. Again, what are you sure you said that you love it? If I want to act, I'm in here. You're provoking me. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, 
in my own in my own house in my people in my people Nekka, Just <laughs> <laughs> Nandero <laughs> 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 Imagine, Wizo can I want you? We're gonna go. Elihana Takasi, Elihana Apocalypse Christmas. 